The U.S. launching a new round of retaliatory strikes against Iranian-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen overnight. Navy destroyer USS Kearney attacking a Houthi-controlled radar site using Tomahawk land attack missiles. The latest strike comes just one day after the U.S. partnered with the U.K. to carry out dozens of strikes on Houthi-controlled areas across Yemen. The Houthis, however, continue to terrorize shipping vessels in the Red Sea, launching a ballistic missile towards the international shipping lanes. In total, the Houthis have now attacked 29 ships in the region over the last two months. Let's bring in KT McFarland, former Deputy National Security Advisor, to talk about this growing problem, KT, there in the Red Sea. Yeah, and, and it's so frustrating to watch this because in the Trump administration, Iran wasn't doing this through its proxies. <laughs> Iran didn't have the money to because oil prices were low because we had sanctions on Iranian oil and we had sanctions. We had put the Houthis on the terror watch list, for example. So there was no way these countries and their proxies could attack the United States. And now we're seeing with a reversal of those policies, that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, and these these strikes, they, they, the, the White House made a big deal about the volume of strikes, but now we're learning it was mostly empty facilities, almost no yeah. casualties. Uh, it didn't. It, it clearly hasn't impeded their ability to continue to launch missiles. So what what was the signal supposed to be then? Well, I mean, all it does is reinforce that notion of weakness, right? Because there were over a hundred attacks on U.S. interests and and U.S. outposts in, in Iraq and Syria after the October attacks. And we didn't do anything. We kind of looked the other way, pretend it wasn't happening. And then they started, the Houthis started lobbying missiles at American vessels. And it's hard to ignore that. So what did we do? We had perimeter defense. As a missile was on its way to a ship, we, we destroyed the missile. But we never went to the source of the missile. And that's what supposedly the Biden administration attack two nights ago was supposed to be. Go to those sources. But somehow or other, the leaders, we never got any of the leaders. Every, those places were empty. And so it, it almost reinforces the notion of weakness. The problem here now is that the Biden administration's approach is always with towards Iran has been, well, we'll placate, we'll appease, then we'll have peace in the Middle East, they won't get angry, they won't unleash their proxies against us, but that hasn't worked. And in fact, it only encourages aggression because as you just pointed out, these attacks are more frequent, they're in, in greater intensity, and at some point, they're gonna, sh they're gonna sink an American ship. At some point, we're not gonna be completely successful in perimeter defense. So that, in fact, would put us in a war we don't want. We're not prepared to fight, which could have been avoided. So I think we've got to keep coming back. If the Houthis do anything, let's go after their senior leadership. You know, President Trump understood that. When we took out um, the uh, leader of the, all the Iranian proxy forces, Hassan Soleimani, we didn't hear from Iran for a good year or two after that. But now we're hearing from him every day. You know, KT, this is, hap is not happening in a vacuum. Um, we just had, we just reported on the election in Taiwan, the pro sovereign um, for, for Taiwan party won, that, that candidate won. But I'm looking at China and I'm going, if I'm China, I, I want to do mm -hmm. something before the next election if I'm going to make a move in Taiwan or any other place. Uh, is that something that concerns you? Yeah, you know, this is, it does not happen in a vacuum. I mean, starting with Afghanistan, we've seen time after time the regional powers, whether it's Iran, whether it's Russia, China, much bigger than a regional power, they're all trying to expand. They're all taking advantage of the United States' weakness. So if you're the leader of China and your goal is to take Taiwan one way or another, economically, militarily, preferably economically, you're looking at the United States. Well, distracted by the election, distracted by whatever's going on in the Middle East, distracted by Ukraine. That's when you make your move. You know, this is like sharks sensing blood in the water. And if they think the United States is weak and distracted, that's when they make their move. Yeah, and overextended. No um, no all great points. KT, yeah. thank you very much for Thanks, joining KT. us. Appreciate it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.